Hey gang, Dallas here with Privateer Press. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to paint the blighted skin tones of the deadly Satixis. Let's get started. And here we have our Satixis Blood Priestess, and we're gonna get her all painted up and ready for the table. And to get started on my Satixis, I'm gonna pull some underbelly blue with my old grabby brush. I'll get a couple drops of that. And some Troll Blood Highlight with that old grabby brush. And it goes to make a nice desaturated blue. And this will give a basis for that purple tone. Like we don't need the purple in it yet, but we'll get there. Because this is skin, you can kind of experiment and just kind of have fun. I'm gonna put like a little touch of Troll Blood base in there as well. Let's see how that looks. This gives you a nice warm desaturated blue to start working with to build in those purples and pinks that'll come later. All right, let's see how this looks. We'll just take this and we're gonna base coat our miniature. And you always want nice smooth coats, but it's very important on skin to get those really smooth. I usually go ahead and paint the entire ocular cavity of faces when I'm painting them with the base skin tone. But by painting them in, I can shadow them and highlight them and all the kinds of stuff like that. And it'll, it'll make the model look more real. Remember, this will take a couple thin coats. And if your first coat's super thin, just do another coat. Just take your time. Nice, even coverage is what it's all about. That's a good skin tone. Make sure your base coat is nice and dry and then we can start our shades. So for our shades, we're gonna take Bastion Gray and a little beaten purple. We're gonna make a mix out of our base coat. Grab a couple dollops of that. Grab some Bastion Gray to darken it up. And now you wanna start incorporating that purple tone from Satixis in there. So drop a beaten purple. You can add more or less, depending on what you want out of the look of your Satixis. Let's go a little bit more. Nice, warm, desaturated purple. And if you want, you can also drop some mixing medium in there. And of course, this adds a little translucency to those shades. Let's be a little more see-through. All right, let's give this a go. Now for this, I'll just be blending this out, two brush blend, just in the shadows, focusing on where the shadows would fall, just to create some volume. I'm not gonna rush this process. Just sort of have fun and put the colors where I want them. Focus on those eye sockets. Put the shadow in there. As you can see, that purple tone is just starting to take hold in the shadows and in the skin. And then as I stretch that two brush blend up and over the skin, it kind of turns that whole blue into like a soft purple. And of course, as we progress in the next, next steps, we'll accentuate that further. I want these fingers to read really well. So make sure I get my contrast in there. Define the fingers. All right, with that initial shade coloring, stretching out over the base color, you're bringing in that purple into it. And this is looking pretty good, but we need to deepen those shades just a little bit more. So I'm gonna take some beaten purple and add it to our shade color. And this is just gonna reinforce those purple tones down in the deepest shadows. And maybe another drop of mixed medium. For these softer skin tones, I like a lot of translucency in my paints. That way I, I can slowly build up the layers and retain a lot of the colors underneath them. Let's have a go at this. A little darker, a little more purple. Just gonna put this in my deepest shadows and accentuate any sort of detail lines. As you can see, this is very minimal. Just a little bit of paint, just a little blend. All 
All right, that shadow in there, she's looking pretty good and is ready for the next step. To add a little definition between each element, I'm gonna add one final dark shade. This is kind of like a dark lining step. This is just gonna give the skin a little separation. So I'm gonna take some Trader Green and Beaten Purple and mix this together. This makes a really purpley brown color that we're gonna to use to line between different elements. And let's draw this in. Just get a little on your brush. I'm just gonna put this where two things touch. So like where her belly touches her cloth. I'm just gonna paint that in there. Maybe accentuate the belly button a little more. And this step isn't absolutely necessary. It's just something I like to do. It just helps create a little more contrast, bring some definition to my miniature. Back to that ocular cavity. Maybe a little line where her face and her hood touches. Maybe in that neck area, back in the back. This really helps to find fingers. So just draw that right where fingers touch. Just that nice deep crevice. Just really separates elements. We can define her little sculpted belly a little bit more. Bring that around from the from the back and let that back be a little darker, like so. As you can see with just a very quick, easy step, gives a lot of definition to all those different elements. It helps us create the contrast that makes the model stand out. So let's move on to highlighting. All right, to begin our highlight step, we're just gonna take some Carnal Pink and Rin Flesh, and we're gonna mix this into our base tone. We just want a nice desaturated pink color. Maybe a touch of Rin Flesh to lighten it. Adds a little yellow to it. And let's add another drop of mixed medium for translucency. Let's blend this into the highlights. I'm just gonna apply this as a highlight wherever you want. We feel the light would be catching and just kind of counter to your shadows. I'm gonna take my time and get nice translucent blends. Really not rushing here. Just try to concentrate on contrast and smooth blends. And I'm really not trying to get all the highlight in one go here. You just kind of let it build up. Just pulling that blend over top of the base colors. Really just letting it slowly grow. Just grow your contrast. And that's what that translucency in the mixing medium helps with. You can do one coat in one spot and two coats in another spot and create more highlight in that second spot by doing more coats. All right, our highlights are coming together, but I'm gonna give it one more pop with a final highlight. And for that, we'll be taking Carnal Pink and Rin Flesh, and this will be the nice pink color in the highlight. It's a nice counter to the dark, rich purples in the shades, because she's pretty pale right now. The Rin Flesh warms it up a little bit. Make sure there's a little life in that skin tone. I'm gonna take one dot of our highlight color from earlier, mix that in there. 
And I'll just add that desaturation that we're looking for. Like I said, experiment, have fun. If you want it to be more desaturated or less desaturated, you could put some murderous magenta in it. There's no real right or wrong way. Just having fun painting skin. So I'm gonna keep these highlights very minimal and just where skin is really pinched or really just the highest parts. Yeah, a little pink just brings it to life. And I got a little paint where I didn't want it, so I'm gonna bring back some of my shadow. Like so. Fixing mistakes is a-okay. With our highlights complete, let's take some Thamar Black and clean it up. So I've cleaned it up with the Thamar Black and added a little bit of Murderous Magenta to the bottom lip, just so it doesn't look like a weird shadow right now. And with that, the Satixa skin is done. And there you have it, the blighted purple skin tones of the deadly Satixis come to life. Join me next time when we'll bust out some ink glazes and paint the town Cator Red. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more videos and check out the links in the description below for more in this series and additional information on the P3 hobby line. That's how a pro does it. <laughs>